time now for a look at your health and a topic tonight you definitely want to discuss with your doctor a new recommendation on which drugs and medical treatments are actually unnecessary. Here to tell us which ones are actually true is Dr. Mitchell Goldman from UCSD. Thank you for being here. Good to be here. Um, I, I'm interested to get your take on this. These, these recommendations just came out. Overall, what do you think about them? Well, it's very difficult to make a recommendation on what you should do and what you shouldn't do, especially if you're that one in a thousand patient mm -hmm. where it's going to help. But the this just came out in the journal, the American Medical Association. And what the authors did is they pulled all of the 17 major specialties and they told, they asked each one of the specialties, figure out what tests or what procedures we're doing that may not be necessary. And so that's what they came out with this list of. Well, let's go right to uh, the first list and we'll go through it and see what you agree with, what you don't, because these can be really, um, confusing for patients out there. So these are treatments, according to the American Board of Internal Medicine, that you don't need, starting with antibiotics for a sinus infection or pink eye. Well, you know, we've been talking about that on the show for a long time, that there definitely is an overusage of antibiotics. And you know, you go to a doctor's office, you feel sick, you wanna get a prescription to take home and start doing something. But it actually is true. Most sinus infections are caused by viruses, not bacteria, so you don't need antibiotics. And pink eye is almost always a viral infection. So that one, true, we're too, too many antibiotics. Let's start with induced labor or a C-section before a full 39 weeks of pregnancy and that stress test when there's no sign of heart disease. Yeah, well the C-section one is very tricky. If the baby is in any distress, if the mother's in distress, you need to go to a C-section. You just shouldn't do a C-section to have a baby on a certain day or at a certain right. time. Um, regarding stress test for EKG, you know, as we've talked about on, on this episode, heart disease is very difficult sometimes to diagnose, and some people will have a, a crushing chest pain, and it's maybe only due to uh, esophageal reflux or heartburn. But, you know, sometimes stress tests are necessary. That's why it's important to talk with your physician about it. Because about your particular absolutely, physical makeup. Because just because an article comes out saying don't do stress tests, it really is up to you and your physician to decide what's best for you. And the last one on our list, uh, what you don't need is a feeding tube in patients with advanced dementia. You know, that's a very difficult thing. If you have a loved one at home with really bad dementia that can't feed themselves, of course it's much better to try to feed them. But if it's not working, if you don't have the uh, personnel in order to hand feed the person, a feeding tube actually may be a good idea. So again, these are not all yes and no types of things. Well, and this brings us to the annual pap test that they say if you're 30 or older or under 21 that you may not need. I find that as a woman a little scary to skip that whole decade in your 20s. Look, as a guy with two daughters, I find that scary too. Because when younger people, the reason they might need pap smears is a pap smear is a great way to pick up if they have H. HPV infection. We know that HPV infection can get, go on to cervical cancer, and so you can pick it up that way. And then if you're over 30, you know, some people, if you're in a monogamous relationship, if you are not sexually active, okay, but still, cervical cancer is real. And, and it's of, insidious. It's it one is. of those that there's really no other way to know. And I was talking to my staff today, and one of my staff's mother passed away from cervical cancer because she did not have a pap smear for three years in a row. So okay. that one I really don't agree with. Okay, so we have one minute, so let's run through these ones quickly. A CT scan for a child with a minor head injury, they say you don't need that, do you agree? You know, again, it all depends. You've gotta have a really good doctor evaluate the child because you don't wanna miss a subdural hematoma or a blood clot on the brain, but most of the time you don't need to do it. All right, the CT scans involving cancer, screening for cancer in healthy people or PET scans? Well, that one I actually agree with. You know, you can't just throw everyone into a PET scan or a CT scanner because not only is it going to cost a fortune, but you're really not going to pick up a um, There has to be a reason why you want to get into a CT scanner. And why are they recommending you don't get imaging for your lower back pain unless there are special circumstances? Oh, that one I absolutely don't agree with. One of my best friends, Dan, went for two months with horrible back pain because his physician would not authorize an MRI. Once he had the MRI, they found a bulging disc that required surgery, and now we just rode our bicycles together 75 miles, and he's in perfect health. So, you know, if it's you that has that back pain, you know, and your doctor says, well, it's not cost effective, 
that doesn't do, do you any good. So it's important to talk with your physician, explain the problems, have your physician do a proper diagnosis, and that's the best way to have affordable health care. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. G. Always great to have good you. Good to see you. Walter, we'll send it over to you.